Hey everybody, it's Chris from Steeda, and today we're gonna to be installing this Ford Performance GT500 swing, or spoiler and wing, with the gurney flap. We're gonna show you a quick product review and then a step-by-step -step installation of exactly how to remove the factory spoiler carefully, and then after that, install this beautiful swing with the gurney flap, so stay tuned. Here we have the Ford Performance Gloss Black GT500 spoiler fitting your 2015 to 2022 S550 Mustang Coupe. This is standard equipment on the 2019 and 2020 GT350s, base model 2020 plus GT500s, as well as Mach 1s with the handling package, except those have the carbonized gray finish, whereas these are gloss black. It's a direct fit replacement for your factory spoiler. Ford Performance also includes a template for those that don't have spoilers at all, but again, it uses the factory holes, so you pull off the factory spoiler and replace it with this. Honestly, the hardest part of installation is pulling off that factory spoiler and all that double-sided tape, so we'll show you that step-by-step. Step. But in terms of this GT500 spoiler, it adds a ton of great looks, additional downforce over the rear. The best part about the spoiler is that you can either run it with the gurney flap or without. Ford Performance does suggest that you run the gurney flap on track only. So without further ado, we're gonna show you step-by-step step how to remove the factory spoiler off of an S550 Mustang, clean everything up, get it absolutely perfect, and ready to drop this Ford Performance Gloss Black GT500 spoiler on your S550 Mustang. These are the tools required for this installation. First thing you wanna do is open up the trunk and remove the interior cover. There are a series of plastic Christmas trees holding the cover to the trunk. You wanna grab your panel removal tool and use that to remove the Christmas trees. Once all the Christmas trees are removed, you can go ahead and work the cover around both of the rubber stops on either side of the latch, and then ultimately around the latch to remove the cover. You'll wanna pop out the emergency release lever as well. Then work your way over to the body plugs on either side of the deck lid. There are four nuts holding the spoiler to the trunk itself. These are 10 millimeter nuts, so a 10 millimeter deep socket will do the trick. There's kind of a trick to removing these because in the past, I'm speaking from experience here, I've actually dropped a nut down the trunk and never got it out. And I'll tell you right now, once that happens, you will know that nut's there every time you open the trunk. So what you wanna do is grab your socket get it around the nut and then drop the trunk further down so you're directly below the nut. That way when you're removing the nut, it falls right into the socket. Once all four nuts are removed, grab some painter's tape and line around the spoiler so you don't damage your paint. That goes for front and rear behind the spoiler. Now comes the fun part. Grab 25 pound or stronger fishing line and begin working your way from one side of the spoiler to the other, removing it from the deck lid. There's a lot of 3M double-sided adhesive tape used to adhere the spoiler to the trunk, so this may take a while. If you feel the need to use a plastic pry tool, that's totally fine, but just be very careful because the metal is thin here and you don't want to dent your trunk. Keep in mind, as you're working through with the fishing line, there are bolts going through the trunk, so you're gonna have to pop one side of the trunk up to get the fishing line on the other side of those bolts and guides. That way, you can work your way across the rest of the spoiler. And occasionally, you may break the fishing line, that's why you can go ahead and grab more. Another tip here would be, and I'm sure at this point you may have learned, wearing gloves while you're using the fishing line to work across the spoiler would definitely be helpful. Not really using the plastic pry tool to actually pry the spoiler itself up. I'm using it to break the adhesive away from the trunk. You can slowly work your way all the way across, make sure all the adhesive is removed, and the spoiler can pop right off. Next, you'll want to use some waterless wash or, again, soap and water to go ahead and clean the surface of all the dirt. 
After that, it's kind of open-ended. You can use your finger to carefully remove the excess double-sided tape that's adhered to the surface of the car. Obviously, if you have a newer vehicle, this is going to be a lot easier. But in this case, this GT350 has almost 40,000 miles on it. It's four years old. So the sun has definitely baked this onto the paint. There are a couple ways to do this. Honestly, do what works best for you. Uh, we started with Goo Gone and then worked our way to Goof Off in order to take the adhesive off of the paint and honestly kind of liquefied the double-sided tape, but that way we were able to get it off the paint. Again, if you have a newer car, this would be a lot easier. Patience is key. In most cases, if you're careful, this part of the process should only take 45 minutes to an hour. Once you're done, you can go ahead and remove the painter's tape, use some rubbing alcohol to get all of the chemicals off of the surface of the paint. At this point, grab some polishing compound to remove the surface scratches that may have happened while you were removing the double-sided tape. Keep in mind that there are open areas under the swing, unlike the factory spoiler in this case, so you'll want to make sure that the surface is nearly perfect for those open areas before you go ahead and move on to the next step. Before you install the new spoiler, go ahead and examine the surface, make sure you're happy with it, and specifically that there is no missing paint. It's possible that you could have brought some paint off of the car with the spoiler removal, so grab some touch-up paint and fill in those areas, that way you have no exposed metal. Once the touch-up paint is cured, grab some rubbing alcohol and go ahead and wipe down the surface one last time before installation of the new spoiler. We'll do a dry run real quick. Go ahead and line up the new spoiler in the guide holes, everything lined up. Make sure it fits flush on the trunk. There's no fitment issues. It looks great, so go ahead and remove the spoiler. That way you can remove the film and expose the double-sided tape. Line the guide pins up into place and slide it in. You'll want to apply roughly 15 to 20 pounds of pressure on all of those 3M tape points. That way the double-sided tape adheres properly to the trunk surface. Again, 15 to 20 pounds of pressure for about 30 to 45 seconds. Next, you're ready to install the nuts. Again, be careful not to drop the nuts in the trunk itself. Again, use gravity as your friend. Go ahead and get them started. They are nylock nuts, so they will hit a point where they stop and you know that they will stay on the bolt. At that point, you're ready to go ahead and tighten them down. After that, you can install the interior cover back into place. Slowly work it around the trunk latch and the rubber stops. You may need a panel removal tool to help get the stops around the cover. You can put the emergency latch into place and then grab your Christmas trees, go ahead and pop them back in. Body plugs can go back into place on either side of the trunk. Close the trunk, make sure everything's aligned properly. You can go ahead and leave the installation as is or if you would like to install the gurney flap, keep on watching. Ford Performance does say that the gurney flap should only be installed for track use only. We're gonna go ahead and install it for you and show you right here. You'll wanna remove the four bolts on the back of the swing. These are T20 Torx bits. Now keep in mind there are longer bolts for the gurney flap installation. I grabbed two of those longer T20 Torx bolts and used it to install the gurney flap in the place on either side. That way I can work my way to the center with the loctite bolts and get those into place. Blue Loctite is recommended for this installation so nothing backs out. Go ahead and get them started by hand and then you can tighten them fully using your screwdriver. Be very careful not to damage the surface of the gurney flap as you're tightening. Once you have the center too tight, you can move on to the outer bolts that you previously put in hand tight, remove those, apply the Loctite and then reinstall. After that, your installation is complete. All in all, the installation really wasn't too bad. It's the removal of the factory spoiler that takes a lot of time. If you do take your time, you're very careful, get some high pound, I use 25 pound fishing line, that really gets the job done well. Then obviously some goo gone or goof off to get rid of all of that residue. Now, if you are drilling and you don't have a spoiler from the factory, take your time, use the template. It has everything you need. 
measure twice, three times, and obviously drill once. Comment below, let us know how you think this swing looks on the GT350. There are any other S550 parts installations or any Ford installations that you wanna see. Hit us up at Steeda.com for all the Mustang and Ford parts you can possibly need. Hit that like, subscribe button, the notification bell, and don't forget the most important thing, speed matters.